post office changes could take effect right after this summer, affecting everyone's fourth quarter. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some postal changes that have been talked about for quite some time. But at this point, it looks like they're going to get set up and passed through by the end of summer. There are some major changes coming that could drastically affect some of your business. So we're here at Fortune's website here. The U.S. Postal Service's new 10-year plan includes slower mail deliveries and higher prices. This has been announced for quite some time. This is from a few months ago, but the last report when grilled, they went into explanation and it still sounds like this could get passed through by the end of summer. The Postmaster General wants to slow down the first class mail delivery days. The basis on this is the current standards call for delivering first class mail in one to three days. This is what they want to initiate and this was what could be in play for fourth quarter. Delivery times would stretch to as much as five days now, according to the Postal Service plan. It also said it would align hours of operation at low traffic post offices. So that means they may not be opened in your local area if it's a smaller one or they don't have a ton of business during certain hours. They may just close it during those time frames. There's a bunch of other aspects going on that will affect actual postal carriers, but for our point of view, the big biggest aspects are the fact that we could pay more for delivery and also they could take longer. Now the big concern on this is that they're already running three to five days or longer on first class items right this very second and they have been doing so for at least a year from my personal experience looking at hundreds of scans on a weekly basis. So from what I see this would just mean that they could extend that even farther down the line because again there is no one to three day service that I can see with any of the first class shipments that I do. It's usually close to a week from the time I mail it to the time it's actually delivered. Again, it depends on where it's at. If it's locally, sometimes even local ones take three to five days right now. So for them to say that let's delay it even farther is kind of crazy. You don't slack off on service to actually fix things. That does not make sense. You also don't charge more to give lesser service. Again, does not make sense. Part of the problem though, from what I see, is they want to use some of the money they're saving to hire more people to actually be consultants for small businesses, which again, makes no sense whatsoever. I know UPS has them and things, but everybody knows who the post office is. Everybody in their right mind can figure out what they offer and how it's shipped. So again, that seems to be more of a waste and more bureaucracy thrown in there. They need to add on other aspects of it, improve the service instead of actually slowing it down. This is stating in this article that this could actually be approved by the late summer here, late summer going into August era. So that would mean that this could roll out for slower service and an increase in price for fourth quarter order. Probably one of the worst times to do that. I know it may not be a fortune or a huge increase and they're already running slow as we said, but if there's any other pandemic related issues or anything else like that, slowing it down may actually propagate it slowing even farther than it has been in the last year with all the grave issues they've had. Now I know the post office has been losing billions of dollars. I can't say it's necessarily their fault because most people do not send mail to people. They don't do it. They pay online. Even bills, almost everything you can do online these days, much better than you could if you sent a letter. So the post office is mostly for shipping reseller packages or orders or working deals out with the UPS so they can deliver the very last run of a delivery. Obviously they are in debt, I know that, but making the service worse and charging us more just doesn't seem to be an answer to fix these issues, especially going into fourth quarter. I know it may be absorbable for many big businesses and corporations to deal with, but for most of the other folks like us, smaller sellers, it could add a considerable amount of headache. If things are already running late and they're allowed to be even later, you're going to hear more complaints from buyers wondering where their item is because they're so 
so used to ordering it from other places like say Amazon where it's there in a stated time two days it's always there with an Amazon order is late usually they're giving a discount right off the bat so I don't see anything going on with eBay Etsy or any of the other platforms that link up otherwise but let's look at one more quick topic here something I just discussed but something you need to be extremely aware of right this very moment now a week or so ago I put out a video talking about ivory sales and I attached a bunch of links on how to tell what's ivory what's not I also have breakdowns of legality and such forth that you can read on the subject as well now if you hop over to the United States Department of Justice's webpage there is a posting man pleads guilty to violating endangered species act this is an eBay seller eBay seller here. This is true, honest story of an eBay person who was intentionally selling illegal ivory online as well as, I think, uh, whalebone and other items that are all banned for sale across state line. This person had no clue on who he was actually selling it to, and he was selling it to the United States Fish and Wildlife Services to undercover agents. Any sales online these days can be tracked by anybody. So you need to be extremely cautious not to list anything that is illegal. It could end you up in some very big hot water. This person could do a year in jail for selling 150 items or so, basically, that were ivory. Now, I'll have a link up here for you to the other video. So if you want to look up how to tell what's ivory, in that video description, there are links that will take you to government and wildlife federation documents, which will show you very well in picture and form and detail how to tell what is ivory and what is not. It'll help you to distinguish fake ivory from real ivory and the whole works so you can safely list things that are legal to list. Don't do this kind of stuff here. This will get you in some deep, serious trouble. Ignorance to the law is no excuse so if you list something that happens to be ivor and you don't know it you don't look into it you could be legally held accountable for that again look at the link to my other video there and check out the description box for the attachments it goes into great detail on how to distinguish real from fake now this just doesn't go for ivory pretty much there's a ton of animal related items you can't sell blue jay feathers is another one that i've seen people get caught for real recently you can get dinged it can be a violation and a criminal record for selling stuff like that a common blue jay feather cannot be sold as well as many other animal related items don't do it if you don't know just don't list it another thing like bone if you plan on listing anything that's bone or that you think is bone you darn well better know what type of bone it is and that it's not ivory people that don't know can mix those up very very easily bone can be listed not all bone so if you do have say bone and it's bovine and you know that for a fact you can safely add the word bovine bone to the listing or if it's horn you can safely add cow horn or something like that to the listing it's not against the rules to list stuff like that but if you don't know don't do it now also looking into the mailing aspects of this if you are using the wrong means to mail your items through eBay or any other site stating it's something that it's not to get a cheaper rate this same type of thing could happen to you they have access to all of the information tied to the items you are mailing out so they can tell what you're shipping if at some point you're caught doing something like that you could be barred from using online services or something along that line so i would be very cautious follow the rules no matter what whether it's shipping or selling items if it's against the rules don't try to list it the same thing can be said for adult material on ebay i have no problem with people listing adult material especially say vintage magazines and pinup style stuff but the point of it is though if you try to do something against ebay's policy or rules you could get yourself into some big trouble some countries do not allow the importation of adult only material just know the rules that's the biggest aspect you need to worry about knowing the rules make sure that if you don't know as I've said many times in this video if you don't know don't list it save yourself the headache of getting in trouble going to jail with federal charges for selling things that are against the rules against the law like this now Ina at e-commerce bites covered this extremely well right here warning you may be selling to the feds 
you never know who you are selling to agencies groups things like that will purchase things it doesn't even have to be a federal agent that's buying from you there are nonprofit organizations that buy certain items and then they report you for selling certain items to them over state lines so you got to be cautious just don't do any of these acts I would recommend checking out e-commerce bites on this article as I said anything related to animals wildlife you need to be extremely cautious on selling online make sure it's perfectly legal before you do it and not just in your state but anywhere you plan on shipping it most items like that cannot be shipped out of the country no matter what so keep those thoughts in mind well there you have it hopefully that gave you some ideas some thoughts if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends Have you ever asked yourself this question? Why do postal clerks get indigestion? There are many reasons. I won't bother to list them. It's all the stamp glue we take into our systems. I guess that's as logical as a man could get. But that's not the reason for their stomach upset. It's from trying to read the American hand, illegibly written throughout the land. This letter will prove exactly what we've said. The name of the city simply can't be read. Oakdale. Oakfield. Oakhurst. Oak Park. Oakwood. Tuscaloosa. 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 Tuscaloosa.